Oh, there it goes. Okay. Question number one. A country's government runs a budget deficit when which of the following occurs in a given year? All right. So anytime they have a budget deficit, do they have money? No. No. Okay. That's not their debt. That's how much they are running negative for that year. So correct answer is B. They're spending what they have over tax revenues. So what we're going to want to do is work on eliminating. So the amount of new loans to developing nations exceeds the amount of loans paid off by developing nations? No, not at all. Okay. The debt owed to foreigners exceeds the debt owed to the country's citizens? That's not what it's asking. So what they're asking for is what is the definition of budget deficit, correct? So that can allow you to eliminate things because it's not about debt. Debt is the accumulation of those deficits for those years. So if they're running a deficit, which our government is doing right now, they spent all their money, now they are borrowing. They're running in the negative. So that means they have a deficit. At the end of the year, you add up all your deficits and that's how you get your debt. So I know when I see debt in some of these, it's not what I need as my answer. So the amount borrowed exceeds the interest payment on the national debt. It's not, ab it's not about borrowing. That one looks decent, but it's not good enough because it's actually asking why do they run it? Well, the government spending exceeds tax revenues. Okay, that makes sense? All right, now on to number two. A high marginal propensity to consume implies which of the following? Okay, this right here we have not done yet, but I'm gonna introduce things this way. So marginal propensity to consume. This is called MPC, okay? So I have MPC plus MPS equals one. This formula is on your graphing packet. What this formula says, is one is my DI or my disposable income. So how much money you make, you have two things in this class you can do with it. You can spend it or save. And those things will be your paycheck. The reason we want a marginal propensity to consume is because we can guess by what people are likely to do. So if your MPC is 0.8 and your MPS is 0.2, that equals to 1. So that means I'm going to spend 80% of my check. I'm going to put 20% of my check into the bank. So if I'm going to, if all, of, all Americans, this is big picture, if all Americans spend 80% of their check, then I know that if I cut taxes by a certain rate or increase government spending by a certain rate, I know how much ripple effect it will have. It's basically a GDP multiplier. So now you have those formulas for multipliers, don't you? On that first page, your graphing test. So if I have a high MPC, are people going to spend a lot of their paycheck? Yeah, that's what they're doing, okay? So now I look at these answer choices. If I have a high MPC, what is that implying? So in my mind, I'm thinking, all right, all Americans are going to spend more of their paycheck this year. They're not putting it into the bank, into loanable funds. They're going out and spending it. Now, what does that do to GDP? It goes up, doesn't it? Because people go buy stuff. Don't we have to make it? Okay, GDP goes up. So a small change in consumption when income changes. We don't know that. It's not a change in consumption because we know what their MPC is. Okay, so A is out. A high savings rate. This is consume, not save. So that one's out. A high marginal tax rate. This is about consuming. That one's out. An equilibrium level of income near full employment. Well, we're not asking about if we're near full employment because that's a recession. So that means, just look at this formula. If this one goes up, what does that mean for this one? It's lower, isn't it? So after all this crap, oh, I'm on video. After all this stuff to wade through, that answer is really simple, isn't it? You have a formula over here. That one goes up. What must this one do? Okay. Makes sense? All right. Any questions about that? Okay. We'll spend a whole day on multipliers, practicing how to overcome a GDP gap, things like that. All right. Number three, the transaction demand for money is very closely associated with money's uses as a. All right. So, Money has what we call the characteristics of money and the uses of money. So its characteristics are that it's tangible, it's divisible, it's portable. 
because used to if you wanted to go get a bushel of corn you had to trade a cow didn't you now we can take a day's work and store it after we sell the cow and then break off a dollar bill and spend it so money's divisible okay so transaction demand that means people need to spend money right so if people need to spend money what is our use if I'm spending money what am I doing I'm not storing the value